Hey, it's Meatball. And Mark. And this is the Rocker Morning Show on demand from 1077 RKR. 1077 RKR, it is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How you feeling? Uh, I feel fine. Sweet. Uh, I got, I got good sleep again, so that's fantastic. I did see a Facebook post of yours yesterday that I was like, I, I was like totally feeling. Was, was that, that it just, yesterday felt like Thursday. Oh my God, yeah. And it feels like today, it, does feel like today should be Friday, but it's just not, and that's yeah. a crime. I think the I think the the world time ethos universe is messed up or something. Uh-huh. That's all I can. That's the best explanation I can give for that. But uh, yeah, but yeah, um, I I uh, it's it's it, I'm I'm having a everything's all out of whack for me right now because my headphones are all messed up. One mm-hmm. of my ear, one of the, the we started getting static electricity in the studio because everything's really dry. We haven't had rain. Uh, and it got zapped the other day, so I only have one earpiece that works right now. And let me tell you, when you're used to hearing everything in like stereo and everything, and then all you can hear is yourself kind of muffled in one ear because you have an earpiece on, and then very clearly uh, you're thrown off, your equilibrium's all screwed up. Like, yeah. if I stumble over myself, that's why. <laughs> I'm just all out of sorts today. But I was going to say, we even forgot. It's a major holiday today. We have uh, we we did get some good news this morning. Thanks to Bob for uh, bringing this up for us. Uh, already giving us a call. Morning, Bob. Hey, morning, monkeys. How you doing on this holiday? Oh, you good, know, man. sounds like we're off to a great start, right? Yeah, we're off to a great start on this Thursday holiday. Wait, what? What holiday is today? Oh, you don't know. Apparently not. I'm in the dark on this one. It's one of my, besides Halloween, it's my favorite holiday. And that and is? You guys work at the perfect radio station, WRKR. Oh, it's Talk Like a Fire yeah. Day! Arg and things. Love it. I love it. National Talk Like a Pirate Day. I love it. Well, does that mean we have to do the rest of the show like that? Maybe the uh, Daily Five. A, a pirate theme daily five. You know what? I got questions today. We might just do that. All right, let's uh, do why? it. Why, gentlemen? I love it. <laughs> so yeah, National Pirate Day. Talk like a pirate day. Arr. What? Like what? How do we know what pirate sounded like? Like we know it from the movies. Like you know, uh, you know, arr, that this be what pirates talk like. You know, that's yeah, what that's SpongeBob what. SpongeBob has set the you know. Well, there was that, and then, and then, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean with Captain Barbosa. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but then you also have Jack Sparrow, who's very, I mean, he was basically like Keith Richards. Yeah, basically. You know? That's. Like, how do we know that's what pirates actually talk like? How do we know they didn't just talk like us, like normal? You I know? think they just had more of a scurvy tone, you know, like the English, like a, an English accent, but with a scurvy tone. What's a scurvy tone? It's like more lazy and gritty. Oh, so you're saying what I do on the weekend is just scurvy. Yes. Skir- mm. Lazy and gritty, just sitting there on the couch, not showering, eating Cheetos. That's- Meatball does not have scurvy. I don't have scurvy, but apparently <laughs> I am. 1077 RKR, it's a Rocker Morning Show with Mark Frankhouse. And Meatball. I've been trying to keep an eye on some of the Halloween stuff that we got coming up because we're getting really close. And there is an enchanted magical Halloween experience I just uh, found out about. And okay. this is more on the uh, east side of the state, but definitely worth the drive. I think I'm going to check this place out. It looks really cool. So is this like, this is this is not uh, a, just a Halloween version of Electric Forest? I don't know because I've never been there. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, I would imagine that no, there is no ecstasy or acid. <laughs> decidedly this. less drugs at yes, this one. Okay, decidedly gotcha. less drugs, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, no, this Halloween experience... Opens this weekend at Glenlore Trails. It's in a suburb of Detroit. Definitely worth the drive, though. The experience kind of starts off with like an immersive like night walk through the forest, and it's kind of illuminated by fluorescent lighting, uh, part of their light shows, uh, kind of mm-hmm. like creepy projections, and then there's kind of other surprises along the walk. There's actually a video I found. Uh, it's kind of a sneak peek. It's up here on the 1077 RKR app if you want to check that out. There's also going to be bands playing and, like, different events happening, like, every weekend. Oh, cool. So it is so, kind of uh, festival-ish yeah, in a way. a bit. A lot of these places will open primarily on the weekends. Right. Which is what this is doing. It, it opens up this weekend, and it's actually going until the first weekend of November. 
Okay. Glenlord Trails, that's the name of this thing? Yeah, that's the Glenlord Trails is the location. Enchanted. Oh, gotcha. Okay. A Magical Halloween Experience is the name of it. And again, this is all up here on the 1077 RKR app. Turns out this is in high demand, too, because, like, the free tickets for kids up to three years old is sold out. <laughs> okay. uh, it goes all the way, like I said, from this weekend to the first weekend of November. From what I'm seeing here uh, from the sneak peek video on this article on the Rocker app, uh, it's less scary and more spooky Halloween fun, uh, okay. which is, means it's good for all ages. But there is an adult-only night on October 4th. So I guess they wouldn't really appreciate me dressing up and <laughs> pretending to, like, work for them and getting, like, jump scares out of ah! people. You know, I'd, like, I just pop out of the trees in the forest like, ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do that and you're going to be working the ticket booth for free the entire ah! <laughs> God, no! <laughs> It's time to turn up your dials and tune out the traffic because we're playing The Daily Five on the Rocker Morning Show. Testing the mental magnitude of your favorite morning monkeys on the radio. And now, your hosts for The Daily Five, Meatball and Mark Frank Cows. It is the Daily Five where Mark and I ask each other questions. The other one answers. Today, I'm asking the questions. Mark is answering. Mark, you got some help on the line today from Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? We're doing great, bro. You got to help me get three out of five questions correct. If you do, we will take a 4 nothing advantage to the week. If not, Meatball will get his first point of the week, making it through one. All right. At the request of Bob earlier this morning, because it is National Talk Like a Pirate Day... Today's questions are all pirate related. Wow, okay. All right. Are well, you ready? Let's go. The, cor- right. the correct answer is yar. Yar. Okay, yes. all right. Here we go. A vast. Question number one. The famous pirate Blackbeard likely got his infamous beard color. How? Did he dip his beard in the tar used to seal broken areas of the ship? Did he dye it black with squid ink? Or would he put hemp in his beard and light it on fire to intimidate people? So, I don't know if it's the reason that his beard is black, Mike, but I know for a fact that he would tie hemp into his beard and light it on fire to scare people. Yeah, I was going to go with that one. I think we'll stick with that one. I don't know if that's the reason his black was beard, but... His black was beard? His beard was black, <laughs> derp. Um, but uh, I think we'll go with that one, the hemp one, final answer. Putting hemp in his beard and lighting it on fire, final answer, that is correct. All right. Likely all the soot from the yeah. hemp burning is what turned his beard black. Whenever gotcha. he would move it around, it would yeah, do all this. That makes sense. Yar, you got one down. I'm not going to talk like a pirate the whole time. Ah. Uh, number two. What was the real reason that pirates wore an eye patch? Was it to better focus their vision when looking through spy glasses? To avoid sunburn on their eyes, they would flip it back and forth to preserve their sight? Or it helped them adjust to light and dark for moving below and on deck? I kind of, well, and this could be Meatball just being very creative, but I kind of like the... Uh, the telescope one, the first one. The spyglass. The yeah. spyglass. It's the one I was going to say, too. You know, we've, uh, our gut feelings have been right so far. So let's, uh, if you're cool with it, Mike, I say we go spyglass, final answer. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Spyglass, final answer. No. No. Actually, it helped them adjust to light huh. uh, when they were going up and down from the deck because there were no lights down below oh, deck. True. Yeah. So they would just switch the uh, the patch over. Yeah, good is, point. Yeah. Parents were smart, man. All right, question number three. Which of these is not a real reason pirates would wear earrings? Hmm. To prevent seasickness, to flaunt their treasures, or to pay for their burials if they died on land? To flaunt their treasures, Mm. to pay for their burial, or to prevent getting seasick? Mm -hmm. Which one of those is not a real reason they wore earrings? I'll go with the burial one. Yeah, you know what? I was thinking of burial too, because I think they wore, I think they wore like treasure and and jewelry to kind of like show their their plunders, so to speak. Um, but yeah, burial hmm, sounds strange. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Mike. I think we go burial. Final answer. Burial. Final answer. 
Uh, no, actually, that was uh, one of the reasons that? they wore earrings. Huh. They would not flaunt no, no. their treasures by wearing earrings. They mm. actually were pretty humble when they were out in public because if they flashed what they had, other people would want to take it. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. Question number four. Which of these is not the name of a real pirate? Okay. The Bastard Beagle Bart Crouch, Captain William Kidd, or Calico Jack? I know Calico Jack is real because he was on the Great Lakes. Uh, so what were the other two? The Bastard Beagle Bart Crouch or Captain William Kidd? Which one of those was not real? Bastard Beagle. Bastard Beagle? <laughs> That's that a pretty sounds, good pirate name. It is a pretty good pirate name, but I'm pretty sure the second one, I think because the second one... Captain William Kidd? Captain William Kidd. Gotta get that answer. What do you think, Mike? I think it's William Kidd. All right, I'll go with you. You sound smart. Let's go, Kidd. Final answer. <laughs> he said you sound smart. That's a compliment. All right, William Kidd. Final answer. No, no it was the bastard. he was a real pirate. Oh, the bastard beagle Bart Crouch was fake. Oh. Uh, Barty Crouch is a character from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, well, we couldn't get the sweep for the week. Meatball gets his first point of the week, but Mike, regardless, congratulations. You won a pair of tickets to see Three Dog Night tonight night at the Kalamazoo State Theater. Way to go, my friend. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, appreciate your support today. 1077 RKR. It is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. Uh, we've got the uh, Globetrotters coming to town in January. We talked about it the other day. So I started to, uh, you know, look into their past some uh, just to refamiliarize myself with them a little bit. Uh, did you know that they once played Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans? Wow. And the Globetrotters got beat by Michigan State. Wait, they actually had a legitimate game? Yeah, they played a legitimate game. It wasn't full of all the, you know, the four-point shots and the, the slam dunks and the tricks and the wow. yo-yo balls and stuff. They just played a legit game against Michigan State, and they got beat. That's crazy. When did this happen? This was in 2000. Uh, Globetrotters had started barnstorming again. Uh, so just, you know, playing exhibition games against college teams and semi-pros and some of the G League teams, uh, just, just to kind of keep their skills sharp, you know, draw attention to them more. And they were on at that time, uh, I believe that the day was November 28th. So it would have been like, uh, right after Thanksgiving, basically. Gotcha. Globetrotters were on a 1,270 game winning streak when they came to Michigan state that year. Spartans were ranked fifth in the nation. Man. It was November, so they were in the season. Like, they were playing games, and I think the next day they went to go play, like, Purdue or something like that. The Globetrotters came in, put up a fight, and I think at one time Michigan State led them by 12 points. Jeez. Harlem got it within two in the late uh, late in the game, but Michigan State pulled it off, won 72-68 to 68 over the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> in a legitimate game. Snapped the longest active win streak of Globe Trotters history, 1,270 games. The last time the Globe Trotters had, had lost was that official loss we talked about in the Daily Five. Yeah. Uh, when they lost to Kareem Abdul Jabbar's All Star team in 1995. Dang. Before so that, I think the last time they lost was to the Generals, the Washington Generals in 1971. It had been. Something like 45 to 50 years since a college team had beat the Globetrotters. That is so wild. I, I thought that was kind of funny, too, because you've always looked at the Globetrotters of like, it's like the wrestling yeah. of basketball, you yeah. know? Um, they were like the Savannah Bananas. Yeah, you know, basically. The, the Savannah Bananas are the baseball version of the Globetrotters. You're, you're playing a game, but you're there for the entertainment. Yeah. But... Knowing that you're like going to be playing the number five team in the country, like you got to like, okay, the fun and games are over. Like we actually have to play a, a basketball game. Right. You always kind of consider them to be all stars, but uh, it is quite revealing how when a team's chemistry is on point, man, they can beat down even teams like the Globetrotters, you mm -hmm. know? Well, I mean, you're talking about specialty guys that, you know, their, their whole gimmick, you know, is they're tall. They can slam dunk. They get right. they a real good stroke for a three pointer. But maybe they're not great at layups. Maybe they're not great at driving the lane. Maybe they don't play. I mean, 
How often do the Globetrotters play defense? Yeah, <laughs> right. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> I can't you know? answer that. <laughs> was this game on TV? Uh, it was televised, or at least it was recorded. I don't know if it was on, like, you know, uh, regular broadcast television or something. It might have been on, like, ESPN2 or something. Okay. In fact, I think the footage we have... Right now on the 107.7 RKR app is from that. I think it's from the ESPN2 broadcast from that. So cool. it is very cool stuff, very fun to watch. And it's interesting to see the Globetrotters just playing normal basketball there. No joke. I'm curious if anybody remembers that game or if you went to that game, how cool was it to watch Michigan State take down the Globetrotters? Give us a call, 978-1077. It, that'd be pretty awesome, man. Hey, Mark, um, I was thinking about this, you know. The Globetrotters are barnstorming teams again, running around. They play Michigan State. Do, do you want to see the Globetrotters schedule a game against Michigan next? Like, see if the Wolverines can beat them? Can we, like, wait another, like, five to ten years for us to rebuild the program? <laughs> <laughs> 107.7 RKR, it is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. And it is that time of year again. The NSRA uh, is a Nationals, North, North Nationals, right? Street Ride Nationals North. Street Ride Nationals North. It's some combination of those words. Uh, <laughs> Craig's in the studio with us. What's up, man? Just, just doing great. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you back. Anytime you're back in town, it means that there's going to be some really nice looking vehicles rolling into Kalamazoo. And that's why we're always looking forward to this show every year. Meatball, you're actually going to be broadcasting live out there. I will. Uh, this will be uh, Friday, 11 to 1. We're going to be there. Um, and uh, we were just talking a little bit ago, the... The parade starts at uh, 8 o'clock? No. Or it starts, I think, at 11. At 11, okay. They'll line up at 10, and I think they leave out at 11. Cool. So the uh, the parade's going to be happening while I'm going out there, which means I'll get to see the cars leave and come back probably for the parade, which is going to be really cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, they'll probably limit it to 50 or 100 cars, you know. Yeah. So. A lot more than that, though, going to be Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So where is this all taking place at? Kalamazoo County Fairgrounds. Perfect. <laughs> Easy enough. <laughs> Easy enough. I, I would give you the address, but I don't know what the address. No, is. no, you're, no, you're totally fine. No, no, it's yeah, it's out there at the out there at the expo center. Um, in the parking lot, always has been. Um, and uh, man, this is this is such a big show. Um, that comes through here and, and to have that history too of like, the, you know, all the different motor companies and stuff that came out of Michigan to have the show in Kalamazoo and, you know, especially on this side of the state, you know, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of love for, for classic vehicles on this side of Michigan. There is. There's a, there's a great number of cars in this area. You know, uh, you wouldn't think so, but I mean, up here, man, the cars are just crazy up here. And, and then I even learned too, uh, a couple of years ago, the Checker Cab Co., the Checker Motor Company actually started here in Kalamazoo. And actually there's a group of the Checker, um, cars that'll come to this show usually. We, we had them out here, uh, in a, as a special display a couple of years ago. Yeah. And there was, I think they had maybe had 15 or so. And there was yeah. some I'd never seen before. Like there was like a limousine. The limo one. one. Yeah. And there was exactly. a, like an ambulance one. Yeah. Like, didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, you're gonna see you're gonna see literally everything out there. Uh, there's a, there's there's a couple of the rat rods I think that come out there. Those are a lot of oh, fun yeah, to see what great. people can modify. Like, I mean, seriously, uh, it, what are what are your favorite moments when it comes to these car shows? Seeing different things, you know. I like the oh, I've never seen one of those, or yeah. you haven't seen one of those in a long time. You know, that's what I really like. Uh, the ones that really thump when they come through, you know, <laughs> can, I, I like that. If if people have a really nice, like, classic car, can they sign up through the NSRA to be a part of this show? Absolutely. Uh, uh, starting uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock, they can go to the ho our host hotel, which is a Four Points by Sheraton. Um, and they can still register for their car up until, all the way up until uh, 1 o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Wow. Awesome. So, very cool. And they're open, they're open from 9 to 6 on fr on Thursday and same on Friday and then until 1 o'clock on Saturday. That's now, good is, to know. is there a specific difference between like a street rod show and like a, a typical like car show you would see, um, you know, in other places? So all of our events, the vehicles have to be at least 30 years old. Okay. Okay. Uh, a, a street rod typically is a pre-49 car and that is the core of our, of our membership. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of guys, they have more than one car. The wife wants to come with them. So they, <laughs> they bring the car that has air conditioning and, you know, yeah. <laughs> the wife likes that a lot better, you know. So, um, you know, it's, it's all different. And, and you know, now that we're all the way up to 1994 can get in, which is crazy to think about that. Oh my 1994 gosh. is 30 years old. They start seeing you some know? square body Ford and Chevys in yeah, there. And, yeah. you know, and we get a little guff about that every once in a while. But to me, I'm a car guy. It doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. I, 
I can go all the way back to the 1900s, you know, up until today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you're on a classic rock. Like cars. You're, you're on a classic rock station, and we're talking, you know, classic rock technically starts about 25 years or so. Sure. So stuff that came out in 1999 is now eligible to be played on the exactly. station. So it's, it's like. It's all generational. Yeah. I mean, it's all generational. What I like is different than what you like and mm -hmm. yeah. what my granddad would have liked or whatever, you know. It yeah. is kind of funny if you think about it, too, because you think about the early 90s and the way they were making cars and just the way they were shaped. And I think back to my dad's 1992 Mustang that had ground effects on it, oh, stock, wow. before they were illegal. This thing was seafoam green. And I'm, <laughs> I remember picturing it in my head and I'm like, that would look amazing at one of these shows. And yeah. it's wild to think because that wasn't, it doesn't feel yeah. like it was that long ago. Yep. But yep, yep, yep. Here we are. Yep. So <laughs> um, there's, there's obviously, you know, people could come out and see the cars and that's obviously the biggest draw there and stuff. But there are other events that go on Friday, Saturday and Sunday yeah, as we well. Are, right? our, um, our commercial exhibitors, of course, will be in the building. Mm -hmm. And we also have an arts and crafts fair and a, a really great uh, automotive swap meet. Oh, cool. And then this year we're going to have, we have a, a spotlight builder that is US 12 speed and custom. Okay. They're going to have some of their latest builds out there and you can stop by and talk with those guys, check out some of the cars that they've uh, just built. And the, the beautiful thing is too, is like if, whether you're, you know, peak gearhead, you know, you're one of those guys that can dig into the engine all the way down to the core of it and pull it apart and whatnot. Or if you're just, you know, you like good looking vehicles, like you're just a casual fan. This is, I mean, there's literally something there for anybody in that room. There really, there really is. And then like on Saturday, we have kids games. There's, they have a, a group that puts on all the kids games. There's a kids coloring contest. So there really is something to do for everybody. Right. And then of course there's the great food trucks that are out there. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know, fair food. Can you know, doesn't get any better. We Oops. were talking about those yesterday and yes, we're, we're cut off. We can't come up with any more <laughs> ideas. So we're going to enjoy the food trucks that are there. Uh, all the info, where can our listeners go to get it on the NSRA Street Rad National uh, they, Show? They can go to our website, which is www.nsra-hyphen usa.com okay. and one of the best ways to follow us is get on our facebook page True. I mean, throughout the show and then th all throughout the year we're posting up pictures and, and stuff of all the different events that we do any updates you know if there's a road closing or something like that we can put that yeah. up on our facebook page get that out to people right away but yeah but our facebook page you know right now is, is really good well, there's plenty of road closures around the area, that's for sure, with all the construction going on. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Going to be hanging out there Friday for a little while. And then uh, all weekend, the NSRA show happening out there at the uh, Kalamazoo Expo Center, taking up the, the whole property, man. Yep. Uh, I love love to see it out there. Love to see all the cars coming through town, too. It's a ton of fun. There's a little new configuration out there okay. uh, this year. Uh, what I would call the front of the building is where spectator parking will be. Okay. Okay. So I guess that opens up a lot more parking spots for people instead of having to park out in the grass. And yeah, stuff. that makes a lot of sense. So. Okay, cool. Good to know. All right. Well, we hope to see everybody out there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the uh, for the show. And uh, Greg, it's always a pleasure to have you in the studio, man. Glad Great to have you here. back in town. All right. Go check it out, guys. 1077 RK Art is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. And it's time for the Rocker Big Picks of the Week with Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness. We are joined in the studio once again with our buddy Nick from Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness. Thanks for hanging out, man. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Fantastic. Everything going all right over there? Good, staying busy? We're staying busy as always, yeah. <laughs> Football season, too. Like, you got the yeah. Broncos coming in and, that, in and out of there quite yeah. a bit, I'll bet. Yeah. Well, we've got a bye week this week, so we get a little bit of a break. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back to work uh, next week. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into uh, some picks, starting with our quick recap from last week. We all lost the Lions pick last week. Yep. That was unfortunate. Uh, Nick and I picked the Commanders right, and I was the only one to get the Bills over the Finns. Uh, so that was interesting. Broncos didn't keep Bethune Cookman touchdown list, but we did get the win. So we all got that point. Leaves us overall looking like this. Nick, you currently have four points in the last two weeks. Mark with three, and I am up top with six. Mm, so I've only, I've only missed two so far. That's pretty nice. So let's see if we can't get some more points on the board for you guys. Mark. We're going to kick it off with you this week. What is your pick? I'm going uh, Detroit Lions versus the Cardinals. You know, the Lions had a weak game on Sunday. Uh, it's like their offense would pick up and then do nothing. Uh, <laughs> I think they're going to bounce back strong against a struggling Cards team. I'm picking Lions 31, Cards 13. Nick, how are you feeling on this one? Uh, I think this one, uh, yeah, I mean, traditionally we bounce back from a loss at least last couple of years. So I think we'll play pretty well. We are away, so uh, mm. that could be tough. But it is indoors, so that's good for Jared Goff. 
Um, so I think we will come away with a win. I think it's going to be a little tighter. I okay. think our offense will finally wake up, and it'll be a 30 to 24. 30 to 24. Well, I... Uh I, I think the Cardinals looked incredible against the Rams this past week, and the Lions just barely eked out that win against the Rams the week before at home. Um, back in Arizona, road test to regroup for the Lions, though. As much as I want the Lions to win this one, I'm going to pick the Cardinals on this one, 28 to 24. I'm going against the green. Here. All right. He's Sorry. helping us out for next week already, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to uh, my pick this week. I'm going to go Chargers Steelers. This is one of the uh, two games this weekend with undefeated teams facing each other. I don't think anybody predicted the Steelers uh, to be on top of that division this early, but the real story here, the new look offense with Jim Harbaugh at the helm in LA. This one is practically a dead heat in terms of who is predicted to win. I think the Steelers get a wake-up call, though. Chargers 31, Steelers 21 for me on this one. Mark? I think Steeler Nation's going to have a really good weekend. Tip of the hat to our good buddy Jake Black on the Mm. weekends. Steelers coming out on top 24-20 is what I see. What are you feeling, Nick? Uh, this one I think is going to be pretty close. Both of these teams are pretty evenly matched. Uh, I think uh, Harbaugh has got the Chargers ready and rolling, and both of these are kind of smash mouth teams. A lot of running is going to be going on. Um, I think it's going to be kind of low scoring though. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking like 17 10. 17 10. Who's we'll winning go with the uh, Chargers? Okay. Okay. Going with the Bolts. Nick, what is your game this week? My game this week is uh, we're going to go with college on mine. So we're going to Nebraska, Illinois. Okay. All right. So these are, I consider this the underdog game. So both of these teams are playing way better than they have in past years. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, pretty traditionally bottom barrel teams of the Big Ten. But uh, uh, both of them are in the top 25 now. And uh, I think uh, this is going to be an opportunity for one of them to come away with a loss, which should be familiar territory. <laughs> I think De- <laughs> I think Nebraska has a slight edge. However, they are at home, and uh, they have a great running game. And Illinois cannot stop the run. All right, so we're going to go with twenty four twenty three Nebraska. Ooh, yeah, tight one. Both teams three and zero. I think it's going to be close to the end. Lots of scoring, but I'm also taking Nebraska thirty eight thirty five. Yeah, I think a new head coach in Nebraska this year for Penn State, who knows how to win unless it's against Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, but uh, Illinois is neither of those teams. I think Nebraska goes big, forty two to twenty. All right, finally, Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness big pick of the week. Number 11, USC. Number 18, Michigan. Wolverines, the underdog for the second time in three weeks. USC's first Big Ten conference game as a new member. It is at the big house, but that didn't mean much against Texas anyway, who is now the number one ranked team in the country, by the way. They so, fire. yeah, yeah. Mark, what do you got? I really hate to say it, but I am not confident this UFM team knows what they're doing <laughs> at all. When you can't get your offense going, uh, you're going to struggle against a team that can score Thirty-three twenty-one USC. Oh no! Oh no, Nick. How are you feeling on this one? Uh, I also have no confidence in this UFM <laughs> team. And I think I've made that pretty clear the last couple of weeks. Yep. Um, they have been gutted. They are rebuilding. So uh, USC will come in and run it on them, and it's going to be thirty to twenty. Thirty to twenty. Well. um... This, to me, is a do-or-die game for the Wolverines. USC, when they played the Pac-12, didn't see stadiums packed like this elsewhere in the conference. Big road test for them in their new conference. I am actually going to go with the home team. I'm um, leaning on the Wolverines, <laughs> edging them out 28-27. to 27. Ooh, tight one. How did I end up being the homer here? I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to be, uh, it's going to definitely make for an interesting score for next week. Hit so. us up on the 1077 RKR app. Let us know your picks and make sure to visit Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness on Westnage. Uh, Nick, uh, tell our audience, you know, a little bit uh, about your services and what you guys got going on right now. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we like to combine uh, massage therapy and personal training. Uh, we've got these Wellness Plus memberships that do just that. So you can save a little money by doing both of those things. And uh, they, are $40 off through the end of this month right now. Fantastic. Well, perfect again. Thank you, Nick. Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness for all you do, for being our sponsor for the Rocker Big Picks of the Week. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. 1077 RKR. It's the Rocker Morning Show with Mark Frankhouse. And Meatball. So MSN recently announced the best place to retire in Michigan. And I've got some feelings on this. Okay. 
If you open up the 1077 RKR app, you can read how they determined which small town would be the best for Michiganders to retire in. Oh, nice. For those of you who are getting near that age, thinking about retiring. The town they came up with is Bingham Farms, Michigan. Well, that sounds nice. I take it you've never heard of this place, though. Uh, no, but I mean, it sounds, you know, quaint and cozy. And yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> Not this so much. This place is dumb rich. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb rich. I'm not talking about nice. I'm talking about stupid rich. I used to drive by this area every day for work, and the houses I I imagined were uh-huh. easily million dollar homes. Okay, it's ludicrous to think of all the places to live in Michigan to retire in uh-huh. that they would think this place is the best. I want to tell you guys the houses that are for sale right now in Bingham Farms. Uh huh. Are you ready for this crap? I'm I'm ready for this crap. There are four houses listed. The cheapest is four hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. <laughs> Next one up to bat, eight hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars. Oh my god! Don't forget about the other boy in the band, one point seven five million dollars. Oh my god! And the most expensive house to retire in quaintly. Is the four point seven million dollar home? Well, that's I mean, sure, that's just somebody's summer home, you know. <laughs> I'm curious if it's just me, but I feel like I'm never going to be able to properly retire. No, not no. making a livable wage in this state, awful interest rates, no real hope of being able to fully relax in life have basically just left me to feel that millennials are going to be the first generation to not make retirement. But. No. Maybe you listening are of an older generation and you're in the same boat too. You can hit me up, 978-1077. I want to know if retirement is is a fairy tale for millennials or if you're dealing with this as well. That's, I feel like we're just going to side hustle the rest of our lives. Ah. Like, you know you know what a slap in the face it is to us millennials? They know we're never going to retire. But to, ah. but to say the best place to do so is one of the most expensive places is absolutely comical. Who did you say wrote the original article? Was was this something off the onion? <laughs> Hard times for sure. 1077 RKR, it is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And hey, Mark Frank House. This would have normally saved until uh, Weird Ass Wednesday, but I, I wanted to get on it while we had the article up on the Rocker app. Something odd happening in the skies, apparently, over Earth. We are getting a second moon. What? The Earth is going to have a second moon soon. <laughs> Uh, so no, this is not like, you know, in Star Wars during A New Hope when like Luke sees the binary sunset, uh, but, but moons instead. This is real life. Uh, and we will have a second moon for about two months. Uh, coming up pretty quick. The smaller moon, which they are calling mini moon, uh, because they're super creative <laughs> in the astronomy world these days, uh, was discovered by NASA last month and will join Earth's orbit for again about two months. Before it heads back out into space. It's going to end up orbiting us for, uh, you know, a little bit while it's here. And then uh, it'll be gone. Um, They're saying it should appear in the sky in about 10 days. So September 29th. And astronomers told the New York Times they expect it to hang around until around November 25th. So So are we going to actually be able to see this thing from Earth from the ground? Well, okay. No. Um, (laughs) Not without a pretty powerful telescope. Um, To give you some perspective here. The full moon looks pretty big in the sky because it's, you know, a lot closer to us than every other celestial body up there. But, like, if you, you know, our perception of it is like, I don't know, if you hold your hand out, you know, it's it's about the size of the end of your thumb. Right. Or something like that, you know. The moon in reality is a little over 2,100 miles wide. The mini moon is only 33 feet wide. <laughs> so, uh, no, you're probably not going to see it with your naked eye. It is apparently an asteroid uh, that just happens to be on the right trajectory to kind of link up with us for a little bit. And then uh, professionals say it'll it'll hang around for those couple of months and then fly back out into space. So, yeah, uh, you can read more on this over now on the website, WRKR.com. That's weird that it would just orbit for like a few months and then it would be thrust back out into yeah. the universe. It just it catches just enough gravity to like hang around for a little bit. But then, you know, it's like an orbital launch or whatever. Like when we right. send satellites out into space and stuff, we'll launch them around different planets and stuff. So, yeah, that's cool. But I feel like we need to come up with a better name than Mini Moon for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about uh, 
What about meatball? Hmm. Like in, in terms of size, you know, it's going to look like a little meatball next to the moon out there in space. Okay, I like I'm, it. I'm, but, I'm just uh, saying. I, I like it. Next one, we're going to call it Mark, though. Call the next one Mark? Yes. All right, next mini moon, we're calling it Mark.